everybody. All right. So I have got a quick haul today. And um, also I'm going to talk about um, a musical that I saw over the weekend. And I am participating in the, in the I'm sorry, what's in the name um, hashtag that my good friend Clarissa, a.k.a. Uh, Paper Confessions with Karamia, um, I'm going to go ahead and explain what the meaning of my username is. But let me go ahead and get the, uh, the haul out of the way. So actually, I am missing one item here. So let me go and get it, and I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. All right, so I have a store in, there's a store here in Memphis called Ollie's Bargains. Um, check to see if you have one in your area. But uh, they're pretty good in terms of like, if you're looking for books, um, like uh, some toys, some food items, but I usually go for the books. And I actually went to go and get some comic books for my brother for his birthday, but I didn't see anything. Um, that I knew that would interest him, but I did find something that interested me. So I am a big Wonder Woman fan. I have been since I was a kid in the 70s, and Wonder Woman was my first comic. I can re literally remember when I had my dad buy me the comic, and that was, uh, I forgot what issue, but I had to be about maybe seven years old. So I've always, you know, loved reading the comicses and especially in the 80s when George Perez took over and changed her origin a bit to be a little bit more closer to like the Greek mythology. So when I saw this, I knew I had to get it because it's Wonder Woman through the years, eight decades of adventures with the amazing Amazon. So it's basically going to start from the very, very first issue, probably. And that's George Perez's artwork right there. Um, from the 1940s going all the way to the 2010s. So, yeah, so I think what they did was they kind of picked probably some of the better stories, you know, um, kind of showing her origin, but also, like, um, how it's changed throughout the years. So <laughs> she definitely got much better once she got to the 80s when, like I said, George Perez took over. Um, for one, he didn't make what's-his-face, Steve Trevor, such a wimp. She's always having to save him. So, yeah, so this is when he took over in the 1980s. So, oh, yeah, I don't know if you guys have ever seen this, but she's having dreams here about Superman. <laughs> so, yeah, so I've already read some of this. Mostly I started from the 80s going forward, but I will go back and read the rest of it. So I did pick that up. I also um, happened to notice that they had some of these sticker books. These are the um, Me and My Big Ideas sticker books, and they were $1.99. So um, I only found two at first, and then I went to the other section where they have a lot of, like, the art supplies and stuff, and they had a whole bunch more there. So the first two that I did see were, let's see here. I think I didn't pick up the other one. Okay, so this one is the fitness. And um, I definitely needed that. I almost got two of these. But I went ahead and put one back after I looked through all of the stickers because I use it in my Hobonichi. Um, well, I actually have the rolls. Uh, gosh, I should have brought that over. But the rolls apparently don't have enough of the weight, like the scale, so that I can... Um, write down what my weight was for that day and I'm already on the second box and I know that's not going to last for the rest of the year so I, I picked this one up so hopefully to supplement you know um what I won't have um yeah I mean this is this will work I don't really use any of like the meal stuff or the water total because I always I've always drank plenty of water throughout the day. So I don't need to like monitor how much water I drink. I mean, I can basically tell you I can finish a 64 ounce, um, my iron flask within half a day. So I know I'm getting plenty of water. So I picked that one up and then they have the rest of these, um, 
and I've always wanted to get them. First of all, let me go over this one. This is the travel one. So I'm going to start working on my um, California insert. And I thought that this would be really cute to use. I do have like the rolls, uh, the box with um, the travel stuff on it. But this is kind of good because it kind of expands on it. So definitely going to use that. And then these three, I've always wanted to get these. And these are the um, wrong, wrong. I never picked any of this up when they had them over at, uh, what do you call this? Over at Hobby Lobby, mostly because I didn't want to pay the price, you know, the full price or even half off, but $1.99, hey, it's not bad. And these, these two are the mini version. And then this one is the everyday. So we got everyday going places and um, another everyday, but in the mini version. And they're really cute. You know, I like her illustrations. I will tell you that I hate the whole disc um, system, so I'd never use a disc planner, but I can still make use of these like in my Hobonichi or in my Traveler's inserts. So yeah, this one is definitely cute. Hopefully I'll be able to travel um, again internationally next year and hopefully to Europe. So, and then we've got more of the everyday and this one had some workout stickers in there. So yeah, I can use that. So that was just a small quick haul there of those stickers and the Wonder Woman book. Okay. Now on this past Saturday, I got the chance to go and see Wicked. Now I've been to the Orpheum here in Memphis before, but it was to see a performance. I've never gone to see a musical. And in fact, this is my very first musical to see in person. So I'm not that big of a musical fan. Um, there's very few mus musicals that I do like. So, and I, I kind of already knew what the story was about Wicked. Um, so, I, you know, I didn't really have any expectations um, walking in, but I will say my experience seeing, uh, the musical was not really good. Okay. First of all, this fucking woman that was sitting in front of me and we were sitting in the balcony and I overheard her and her two daughters talking at intermission about how much they were fucking theater nerds. Okay. She ruined my experience. One, she kept moving around in her seat in front of me. She had those like theater glasses so she could see, you know, um, she could see the, the cast, you know, from far away, but she kept fucking moving her head. And then make, to make it even worse, she kept dancing along with the music, you know, with the uh, musical numbers. And every time I would move to the left because she's got her head to the right, you know, not even like 10 seconds, she'd be moving to the left. And then I'd have to move to the right. And it was just like, that was going on for like half the musical. I was so pissed, you know, because I just could not, I, I couldn't see. This woman would not sit still. And I, you know, like I said, I've never been to a musical. I've never really watched. Um, yeah, I've just never watched a musical. And I was observing the other people that were sitting around me and nobody else was moving around. You know, they were all sitting still. Even her daughters were sitting still. She was the only idiot that was moving around. And um, so at intermission, I got up and moved to a different seat because I noticed I was sitting in the aisle and I noticed across from me, there were two seats that nobody sat in. And I just wanted to be sure that, you know, um, somebody wasn't going to take those seats, you know, that had tickets. So I moved to those seats because I noticed that the old woman that was sitting in front of it was not moving around. So I was able to at least watch the musical, you know, after intermission you know, relatively, I mean, it was fine, but yeah, that woman just kept moving around. I was just, I was so, I mean, I was so mad. I was so tempted to kick the seat hard when she was bopping around. That's how bad it was. Okay. So overall, um, I think the cast did a really great job. Um, you know, as far as the story, I, like I said, I knew some of the story. So when I got home, I read it, I read up on the, um, the Wikia about the books and wow, they really did change a lot <laughs> in the musical. They gave a happy ending compared to the books. So yeah, it was okay. You know, 
at least I know where at least two of the songs now, the well-known songs are from, but, um, I mean, I don't know. I, musicals are still just not my thing. I would much rather watch a play. Okay. So, yeah. So like I said, um, we went and saw, I went with my sister and her two daughters and then, uh, one of my nieces. So, um, and the girls had a blast. They love it. You know, they, their favorite part is when she was teaching her, she was teaching uh, what's her face to like toss her hair. And now they, that, that's all they ever do. So yeah, so I did pick this up and it's showing the upcoming, um, you know, shows. Um, the only thing I'm probably interested in would be Hamilton. That I have a feeling I will like. Um, I wouldn't mind seeing some like it hot. Uh, Moulin Rouge, yeah. I mean, I love the movie, but I don't know if I'm going to like the play version of it. So, so yeah, so I picked that up and I did get an extra one of these so that I could cut it up. So um, when I do, you know, my memory journal thing, I have this and then I have the, the full copy. So after the, uh, the musical, we, because or, the Orpheum here in Memphis is only a block from Beale Street and we parked in the garage that was um, like literally right next to Beale Street. Um, we went ahead and walked to Beale Street to go and get some cookies because there's this really good place called Insomnia Cookies. And you can look it up online. And, um, you know, we went ahead and got cookies for the girls. And while they were standing in line, you know, I told my sister what cookie I wanted. I went ahead and um, dropped over to the gift shop next door because it's the only time that I can really buy anything that's Memphis related. And, um, yeah, you have to go to the touristy spots, right? So I picked up some postcards just in case, because sometimes it's always good to have this if I have to mail it out. And I thought I had bought two of these, but I guess I didn't. I only got one of the Tennessee. And then I got like, what, four of the Memphis ones. These are really good. Um, I got another Memphis one, another Memphis one. And then, of course, I had to get some Elvis ones. So every, when I was in Graceland, this was, these were sold out like at all the gift shops. So I made sure to at least get two of them, you know, Elvis's favorite sandwich, peanut butter and banana. So I thought that that would be pretty funny to get. I also picked up this patch, um, that I plan on putting on a tote. So it's an Elvis patch in the shape of a, um, guitar pick. And then I got two enamel pins to put on my um, Delphonics. So I picked up this Elvis enamel pin. Okay. And then it's funny, I've got all these other enamel pins from their other cities, but I don't have one of Memphis. So I picked that one up and they weren't badly priced. I mean, they were six bucks. Um, the patch I think was three bucks and these were 50 cents. So yeah, so that's just my little haul from Beale Street. And finally, so I'm participating in Karamia's um, What's in a Name. So it's hashtag What's in a Name. And I guess I can go ahead and tell you guys why I chose Nikita. So back in the 90s, there was an old show that was on the USA Network that used to come on, I want to say it was on Saturday, no, Friday nights, I think. It was on Friday nights. And it was called La Femme Nikita. Now this is based off of the story, um, you probably have heard of Point of No Return. I think that's the movie that Bridget Fonda starred in. And she played the same character. But, you know, it was an okay movie. But the show was much better. They really expanded on the character. So she, if you don't know about anything about this show, basically, um, Peter Wilson, who plays Nikita, um, she was framed for a crime that she didn't commit. And so she um, was forced to enter this program where they trained her to be like an assassin, you know, um, a spy. Well, more an assassin. And so she, you know, she doesn't really agree with their tactics. And so she's always kind of rebelling against them. Her code name is Josephine. And throughout the show, you know, she falls in love with her handler, her mentor, um, and Michael. And yeah, it's just basically showing her having to, you know, deal with being in this um, organization that forced her into it. And then, um, you know, just trying to help people at the same time too. 
but it went on for about five seasons and it was like the number one show on TV at the time when, yeah, when, you know, it was just all about cable and not all these streaming services. So I was really, really into this show and I love the name Nikita. So I went ahead and used that as my, my username and the 2471. Well, my birthday's on the 24th and 71 is the year I was born. So yeah. So that's where my username came from. Okay. Um, yeah. So that is it for today. I will have a, an Amazon returns bin store haul coming up. And I know that uh, my tenant order is also coming in this week and possibly I will have my traveler's notebook haul come in as well. So I've got a lot of stuff that I've got to film in the upcoming week. All right, guys. So I hope you guys are having a good week and a good weekend. Bye.